of the agenda. I now give the floor to the Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres. Thank you very much, Madam President. I start by apologizing uh, the fact that I will have to leave very early because this was squeezed into uh, what was already uh, an impossible agenda. Madam President, Excellencies, hell is breaking loose in Lebanon. As I told the General Assembly yesterday, we should all be alarmed by the escalation. Lebanon is at the brink. Of course, the Blue Line has seen tensions for years. But since October, exchange of fire have expanded in scope, depth, and intensity. Hezbollah and other non-state armed groups in Lebanon and the Israel Defense Forces have exchanged fire on an almost daily basis, with Hezbollah indicating that they would require a ceasefire in Gaza to cease hostilities. The exchanges of fire have been in repeated violation of Security Council Resolution 1701, and the daily use of weapons by non-state armed groups is in violation of Security Council Resolutions 1559 and 1701. Lebanese sovereignty must be respected, and the Lebanese state must have full control of weapons throughout Lebanese territory, and we support all efforts to strengthen the Lebanese armed forces. Mr. President, Madam President, sorry. Since October, nearly 200,000 people within Lebanon and over 60,000 from northern Israel have fled their homes. Many lives have been lost. All these must stop. The communities of northern Israel and southern Lebanon must be able to return to their homes and live in safety and security without fear. Madam President, since the Emergency Council session on Lebanon on 20 September, in the wake of the remote detonation of pagers and handheld radios used by Hezbollah across Lebanon, hostilities have escalated dramatically. The past weekend saw heavy exchanges of fire endangering civilians on both sides of the Blue Line, with Israel's defense force striking approximately 400 Hezbollah targets in Lebanon, while Hezbollah launched hundreds of missiles, rockets, and drones into northern Israel. Monday was the bloodiest day in Lebanon in a generation. The Israel defense forces said that it struck some 1,600 Hezbollah targets. Many civilians were killed, and many, many more were injured. Since then, Israel continued its deadly strikes across Lebanon, including in the southern suburbs of Beirut. Lebanon Ministry of Public Health reported that 569 people were killed on Monday and Tuesday, including 50 children and 94 women. Over 1,800 people were injured. Lebanese authorities report a total of 1,247 deaths since October. Two colleagues from UNHCR were among those killed by yesterday bombing. Today, further strikes killed at least another 50 people and injured more than 200. Meanwhile, roads are clogged as families desperately seek safety, and many are stranded at the Beirut airport. The Ministry of Interior of Lebanon has reported that over 90,000 people have fled southern and eastern Lebanon towards Beirut and the northwest with 30,000 people in shelters. At least 170 million US dollars are needed to respond to growing numbers of displaced and mounting humanitarian needs. Madam President, the people of Israel have endured also repeated attacks from Hezbollah and others. According to Israeli officials, since last October, more than 8,300 rockets and around 1,500 anti-tank missiles and hundreds of explosive unmanned aerial vehicles have targeted Israel, with 49 Israeli death and hundreds injured. Hezbollah continues to launch drone and increasingly high-caliber missile and rocket attacks on military targets and residential areas in Israel. Earlier today, they launched a ballistic missile targeting a Mossad headquarters near Tel Aviv. The ongoing rocket attacks have injured several people in Israel with drones and other with homes and other structures damaged. Monsieur le Président, les efforts diplomatiques se sont intensifiés 
afin de parvenir à un cessez le feu temporaire permettant l'acheminement de l'aide humanitaire et ouvrant la voie au rétablissement d'une un, paix plus durable. Nous soutenons pleinement ces efforts. En début de semaine, la coordinatrice spéciale de l'ONU pour le Liban, Mme Janine emis Plaschert, s'est rendue en Israël pour des consultations insistant sur le fait qu'une escalade militaire n'était pas dans l'intérêt de personne. Le chef de mission du commandement de la force intérinaire des Nations unies au Liban, la FINUL, le général Haroldo Lazaro, est resté en contact étroit avec les partis, soutenant l'accès humanitaire partout où cela est possible et continuant d'appeler à une désescalade immédiate. Malgré les conditions dangereuses, nos soldats de la paix restent en poste. Afin de réduire les risques pour le personnel de la mission, la plupart du personnel civil a été temporairement transféré au nord du fleuve Litanie. Quelques membres essentiels du personnel restent dans la zone d'opération de la mission en compagnie de nos casques bleus. Je tiens à réaffirmer notre profonde reconnaissance envers nos agents de la paix, civils et militaires, qui servent le long de la ligne bleue, aussi qu'à l'ensemble de tous les pays contributeurs de troupes. Madam President, I implore the Council to work its lockstep to help put out this fire. The parties must immediately return to a cessation of hostilities and take real actions towards full implementation of resolutions 1559 and 1701. Civilians must be protected. Civilian infrastructure must not be targeted. The safety and security of all UN personnel and assets must be ensured. International law must be respected. To all sides, let us say in one clear voice, stop the killing and destruction, turn down the rhetoric and threats, step back from the brink. An all-out war must be avoided at all costs. It would surely be an all-out catastrophe. The people of Lebanon, as well as the people of Israel and the people of the world, cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza, and I thank you. I thank the Secretary General for his briefing. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign and European Affairs of Slovenia. Excellencies, 